Jingo, my people, follow who no road. He says, Silence is Simon A. Banjoku. Naim, they carry us into Biafra. He, he they play the show. No be lie. The good guy, Prime Minister of the Afghan Republic government. In Ezai, when they for Obodo Yibo, Finland. Within government, Naim, they do the wonder. Say, make you join, follow up. He go sweet you for body. Freedom today, better for you. And you're picking them. I they tell you. You can't still bring open girl raffle draw with big big money when you go win. I they tell you, not be lie. Starting from on the 29th of November, go reach December 3rd. Now this thing they happen 2024. I make a shock you. The money, hey, it makes sense where well, where. Twenty dollar eh? and total winning price ten thousand dollar. A first prize five thousand dollar. Third prize two thousand dollar. B F R O. No see that no. No see that. Consider look na dog name. They want from here, gather money to build Biafra, where you they cry for sins. <laughs> you go also win to not play. Like and share the program to other platforms. Make sure you click your notification bell so that you'll be notified each time we upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. In this platform, you know what we do. We do not preach hate speech. We do not instigate violence. The only thing we do here is to preach freedom to encourage the Biafran people to speak to the world and tell the world the true situation of things in Biafra land. This platform where you are watching this program is representing the Biafra Republic of the Exile, a platform under the command of our Prime Minister Master Samuel Nepa on the Supreme Command of Master Nandekan. We will continue to speak the truth, nothing but the truth. If you are a lover of freedom, if you are a lover of the truth, it does not matter your tribe, your religion, your location. You are going to enjoy your stay here and we welcome you. But if you are one of those who doesn't want the truth and you don't want people to get their freedom, you will not enjoy your stay. Let us watch together and see what this brother has to say. At the moment, it is the story of Lieutenant Colonel Emmanuel Ajayi retired. He is giving us first-hand accounts of the civil war. Before Ajayi, there was Dr. Yemi Farumbi who talked about Awolowo's rule before the civil war. If you scroll down my social media pages, you will find Femi Kende, the author of the book Ladoke Akintola in the Eyes of History, telling the story of the First Republic. So I'm here to enhance the story I have been telling. It is about history, it is about politics. It is about power. We will look at the Aburi Accord on this edition of the program. But before the guns began to boom, what happened? What were the issues and the events before the guns began to boom? The guns boomed during the first coup, that is the January 1966 coup. The guns boomed during the counter coup of July 1966. The guns went angry and the civil war ensued. So we will walk down the history lane understanding where we are coming from and as we work down we'll be consulting political books to broaden the discourse 
I hope you're ready for me. I am ready. I'm already with a book here called On a Darkling Plain. A book written by Ken Sarowiwa. I'll come to this book. In my promo of this broadcast, I talked about Max Sulun. He's the author of the book Oil Politics and Violence. In the book, he said that the Aburi meeting of January 1967 evolved into perhaps the best documented constitutional debate of all time. That is profound. He makes the point that that accord discussed fundamental concepts regarding the balance of power between the central and regional government in a federation. You know that debate is still on when we say restructuring restructuring we are saying we define the balance of power between the federal government and the states and that was the same meeting that was called in aburi in 1967 many years after the discussion is still on the table As we struggle to contain headsmen and Boko Haram acts of terrorism, as we fight to arrest the scourge of banditry and insurgency in the Southeast, it is important, I state at this point, that social conflict is inevitable in a society. But social conflict is critical to national development and it originates from human interaction. As far and as long as members of the society continue to interact, there will be conflict. So conflict is part of human society. Be it a poor or rich country, there is the presence of conflict. What stands progressive countries in good stead is their abilities to transform conflict into new opportunities with less use of violence. That was why on Saturday I was not comfortable with the use of violence to deal with communities like Okwama. In Delta State. A well managed conflict is a source of strength to the political process. Aburi Accord was an opportunity to manage the Nigerian conflict. The bane of the Nigerian state is the mismanagement of conflict thus plunging the country into the valley of despair. It is the failure of leadership. We mismanage conflict. And because of the mismanagement of conflict, our conflicts snowball into insurgencies. You see what is going on in the southeast? It has become an insurgency. A quiet insurgency is already going on in the Niger Delta. Boko Haram terrorism is insurgency. Banditry is also terrorism. It's insurgency. In the plateau, the victims will want to fight back it becomes another level of insurgency. Having said that, it is important we reflect on the crisis of early post-independence Nigeria and we look at how Nigeria handled the conflict 
that plunged it into a devastating civil war. In this case, a Buri Accord easily comes to mind. I have talked about Max Sulin in the book Oil, Politics and Violence, where he said that the Aburi meeting of January 1967 evolved into perhaps the best documented constitutional debate of all time because it discussed fundamental concepts regarding the balance of power between the central and regional government in a federation. So if that accord was so fundamental to the peace of the state, why was the accord not implemented? And Ujuku went to town to say, On Aburi we stand, On Aburi we stand. And Gowon says, No, what was signed in Aburi was misinterpreted. And the argument continued, and the war began. The guns began to boom. Ken Sarowiwa. You know, Kane was a good auto. He was killed by Sani Abacha. Remember how good he nine. Ken Saruiwa in the book on the Darkling Plain. If you have the book, you can turn to page 61 to 62. The book is a classic. Page 61 to 62. Yes, I'm trying to get to my own page. Where he talked about Aburi, Aburi Accord. So when news came that general agreement has been reached at the cordial meeting in Aburi, there was general elation. Ujuku returned and spoke in glowing terms of Aburi. I'm reading from Saruwiwa's book. Ojuku had virtually achieved his confederal aims if the decisions of Aburi were implemented. There was little doubt that peace would return to Nigeria. So Saruwiwa agrees that if Aburi Accord were implemented, peace would have returned. He says the generality of Igbos were cock a hoop about Aburi. It was inconceivable that an Igbo man would go to Bagain with Aousas and fail to win. Why did he make that statement in this book? Look at it. He says, It was inconceivable that an Igbo man would go to Bagain with Aousas and fail to win. The non Igbos, on the other hand, were dismayed. It looked as though the nation had sold them to the Igbos. In river circles in particular, there was great agitation. Some showed their dismay openly. I had a rather hot argument with an Igbo pharmacist on the issue. He made it quite clear to me that the Igbos were in no mood to brook argument on what was fast becoming a life and death issue to them. At the University of Nigeria, Aburi was accepted because Ujuku had said it was acceptable. Interesting. Interesting. I just read from On a Darkling Plain, an account of the Nigerian Civil War, a book written by Ken Saruwiwa. The book is out of print now. So if you have a copy, you are among the lucky ones. Dara Books has been trying to find copies, but we can't. 
This is my personal copy, and I just read from it. If you continued reading the book, Saruwa said Ojuku charged that Gowan had had a rethink on the matter and that he had gone back on his words. And when they came back from Aburi, Ujuku was very brilliant in Aburi. So he took the Nigerian side to the cleaners. So they accepted all his argument. You know, he was bright. He spoke impeccable English. He went to Oxford University. So Sarui was said, Ujuku charged that Gowon had had a rethink on the matter and that he had gone back on his words when they returned to Nigeria. Because of that, Ujuku went on to publish the proceedings at Aburi. He even played back a recording made of the proceedings of the meeting. I'm trying to get that audio. I used to have it, but I checked my hard drive. It's corrupt. I will get it. The meeting of Aburi, so that you would listen to it. What happened in 1967? Sarawiwa in his book said, Eastern Nigeria was in ecstasies when Ujuku returned from Aburi. And Ujuku's reputation soared. They played back the recordings. I want to see the picture of Ken Saruwiwa because I'm talking about him now. I want to see Ken. I hope you can see the picture of Ken Saruwiwa. I'm talking about his book, On a Darkling Plain. His account of what a booty was. Eastern Nigeria was in ecstasies, and Ojuku's reputation soared. The played back the recording showed him, the playback of the recording showed him as confident, well-spoken, and witty. Ojuku had obviously done his homework, Sarawiwa said. Ojuku had won in that debate he continues according to ken saruwiwa aburi became a cash ward in homes motor parks markets and offices the aburi recordings were waxed on gramophone records and sold at a high price they were played and replayed in open places and soon Aburi singlet appeared on the street. On Aburi we stand. Aburi is our father. On Aburi we sleep. Aburi or nothing, they sloganized. That is Ken Saruwiwa there. The eastern region, governed by Chukwemeka Odumej Gojuku, believed it was Aburi or nothing. I want us to listen to Ojuku. Ojuku here talks about Aburi and in this talk pick his words and give meanings to the tune. The tapes are available. The records are there. In fact, only about two weeks ago, I saw a set of the records again. The transcripts are available. But we talked about the Nigerian situation. And certainly, at the end, everybody says, Oh, you told them this, you did that. The fact was that our case was so clear. At Aburi, yes, we agreed on um, area commands for the armed forces. At Aburi, we agreed that the police force would be decentralized. We agreed on those. Yes. I thank you for listening. Please share this program to all platforms. Share to family and friends. 
Reach out to anybody can reach out to so that we can be able to fight this battle to be winning. I appreciate you. Thank you for being part of the program and stay blessed. Biafra government, peace, progress, unity and equity. We move. Airborne.